Hello, me. It's me again. No, um, all jokes aside, though, uh, let's see, what are we at? We're at the 15th of September. So now it'd be about two weeks. Did a whole bunch of record hopping, bought a whole bunch of stuff, have all that haul and split up into three parts for, for uh, videos and I'll, I'll get to I will get to those but I was going to a concert and I figured I'd, I'd, I'd do a review and there's there's something I do want to point out but I I don't think it'll do it'll do much good, but it, it may help clarify some things for me, because um, I I'm a little uh, ticked and um, aggravated. Uh, at whatever, but anyway, yeah, I know. Uh, questioning the shirt. Um, the issue is. My next really hurts. This is let's see, today's Sunday, so it's two days after. I'm extremely sore, sore still. I was in the pit um, for uh, this. And um, I'm extremely, still extremely sore. Neck hurts. You know, arms, knees, feet, back. You know, I got scratches. I got knocked in the head, knocked in the nose. But you couldn't wipe the smile off my face. But, uh, you know, I, you know, I'll start with. I'll start with the bad because I want to end on a good. Ooh, Grand Theft Auto trailer. Okay, I've seen this one. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I I've been waiting for that for five years. Excuse me. No. Um. Okay. So pretty much probably is. Is, is not going to do much good of anything to be completely honest since Live Nation basically handles or handles every concert they've ever gone to and just about every you know every concert that there is the, th the thing is um, the concert was amazing it was great worth it and, and all the shit that I had to put up with was definitely worth it you know, in the end, of, of course, because of who I was seeing, I mean, I, I knew it was going to be rough to begin with, but, you know, I, I've got a few, I got a few questions and a, a few things that I need to say, but I, I like, I like ending on a positive, so I'll get to the bands and the actual concert. Um, you know, in a, in a little bit, but I got a piece I got to say here. Okay, so... I find out about this concert in um, at San Manuel in San Bernardino off of the Live Nation app on my phone. So they go, hey, you know, Iron Maiden Battle of San Bernardino, you know, September 13th. You know, this was, you know, three, four months before uh, the concert and everything. So it's like, okay, cool. So I find out when tickets go on sale. You know, I'm there just the second that, that they open. I get amazing seats. I get pit tickets, two of them. Don't remember what I paid. It doesn't really matter. I think it was maybe like a, you know, 90 bucks a ticket, maybe, or something like that, I don't know, so it didn't, didn't really matter for me, because again, the bill was amazing, but, um, 
And the only band that was there that you didn't see was on that shirt with Warbringer. Uh, they are amazing. But again, later. Um, so I go through, you know, I go through all the information, you know, the credit card, all that, all that shit, log in and all that. And um, then it goes to, how do you want your tickets? The only option I have, which I don't, I still don't understand, is paperless. Paperless. That was the only option I had for tickets for this thing. And, okay, that was a head scratcher because you're standing in line, people had paper tickets. They may have gotten them from the box office. May have gotten scalpers or other ticket agencies. I don't know. The only option I had from Live Nation was paperless tickets. So that was a little confusing. I'm fear, you know, what is this? You know, is you know, and again, I'm not going to get political here. But if that had anything to do with it, I don't, I don't really understand that. I, I, I really don't, because that's. It's, it's incredibly stupid and confusing for both me and the person dealing with the tickets. Ex extremely confusing. Because, look, I'll show you why. Okay. They've got these, since it's, if you had paperless, you, you had to present your ID and scan the credit card and they would scan the credit card that you bought the tickets with okay sounds simple and this is what I found out on the website on, on livenation.com and for the most part there wasn't any problem because the people that were talking about it, it said that it, it was okay you know it was time consuming and of course I figured that but eventually you get in and it, and it wasn't it wasn't too painful the, the thing about it is you know, you get up there, the scanners aren't working. The, the scanners aren't working. And they've got, you know, four or five lines for tickets. Only two of those lines had those credit card scanners. And they're on, you know, the, the, the opposite. You got, you know, two, three lines in the middle, and then on the outskirts, on the outside of them, those are the lines that have the credit card scanners and they're not working so they gotta call people to get them working and you know the lines just backing up and backed up and backed up and backed up and and all this ridiculousness and everything and the thing is the day before the concert so this would have been Thursday this last Thursday Live Nation sends me an email you know, we're happy and excited, you're going to this concert, thank you for choosing Lion Nation, blah, 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 you know, and they tell, they start detailing, you know, you know, information, there's going to be an early bird, you know, give a rundown of the bands, there's a, uh, you know, you get there, you can basically get there early, because you can have first shops at merchandise, and you know and then you've got early bird special you know you got from one to three you got three dollar hot dogs three dollar water three dollar soda didn't have three dollar beer which would be awesome I don't drink and I'm certainly not going to go drink when it's you know you know, it's 95 degrees, you know, in, a, in the middle of the day, and you're directly in the sun. But that would have been cool, but of course they weren't going to do that. But, you know, so that was cool. That, that was cool. And it was different because I'd, I'd never done a concert that was like that because, you, you know, it, you, know, you didn't have access to that kind of stuff. So I, I thought that that would be pretty cool. Well, here's the thing. The parking lot opened 10 o'clock and you know I've been to this venue 
I've probably seen 10 concerts there. I've been going there since Oz Festival 5. So I know the venue. I know how it works. I know how to get in. You know, I know the parking lot. I mean, I've done this at this venue. I know it. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. So it's like, you know, the parking lot opens at 10. We get there probably 10.10, 10, you know, after, after going to breakfast. And so... You know, we're, you know, in the car, starting the preparation, and, and, all, and, all, and all of this, you know, we're putting the sunscreen, we're drinking water, hydrated, and, and all of that, and, you know, I'm, I'm getting out what I'm, you know, getting out, make sure I won't, you know, I'm, my pockets are empty except for wallet and phone and, and that kind of thing, you know. So there's nothing that they can confiscate and, and everything like that. Get in line at 11 o'clock. So that's, and the gate's supposed to open, supposed to open at 1. So you got roughly, you know, two hours or so. Um, gates didn't open till 1.30. Remember, there's this early bird that we're supposed to have from 1 to 3. So, these guys, you know, we're standing there in direct sunlight. And, sorry, I'm, I'm, the charging is on, forgive me if I look away from the screen. But the thing is, we're standing in direct sunlight. And of course, we knew that would happen for a little while. For you know, an extra half hour for these guys basically to sit there with their thumb up their ass. They're doing nothing. They're just standing there like a bunch of dumbasses. You know, for an extra half hour. You know, screwing us over. Finally, we get in after practically getting an anal probe. Uh, which is to be, you know, expected, but, I mean, you know, anyway, it, you just, you got to live with it. So, once we, once we get in half hour late, then you got to deal with the, the line to give to the ticket person. And it's like, you know, oh, well, gee, we've only got two of these credit card scanners. They're on the outside of the lines. Thankfully, we were in the right line. But they're not working. So, okay, well, gee, uh, you know, you just need to, 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 to stand here while, while we go and we call, you know, a slightly less dumber person to come and fix this for us. So they do. And, and you get in. And you do the, the paperless thing. And then they fucking print you out tickets. So, if the idea of, of paperless tickets was for this political motivated crap. If that was if if that was the idea behind Pepperosi, and I don't know why they do it, if, if somebody's experienced with this, please tell me why, and 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 make me shut my mouth because I want to know because this, this is bugging this is bugging me. This has been bugging me since I bought the tickets, and I never want to do paperless again if I can avoid it because it's retarded. Sorry, I just offend I just offended probably everybody that's going to view this. I'm sorry, you know, bad me. But anyway. We, we, you know, you get to this thing, and, and, and it's like, you know, they, you go paperless, then they print you out tickets. You know, it's like, huh? Why didn't you just do this, you know, three months ago when I bought the tickets in the first place? You know, because it goes much faster. All I do, you got your barcode scanner, beep, you're in. Instead of waiting, oh, we got to do with this new fango machine. You know, 
I mean, come on. You know, then once you get through that nonsense, you know, you're, you know, I knew that I had to get in line for the pit early. You know, so it's like I was going to miss Overkill, unfortunately. I was going to miss Warbring, unfortunately. But I, and I like, I wanted to see all the bands. Don't get me wrong. Because I, I like everybody on the bill. Sabaton was the only one I didn't know about. They're, they're from Sweden, and of course in America, you can't get very good coverage on European metal. You have to go to, you know, magazines from the UK to be able to get, to get that information because Revolver, which is the only magazine that really covers this type of music, they don't cover jack shit. And all they do is, is do their hottest chicks in metal, and I've done a rant about that, you know, and put, they put, you know, Amy Lee of Evanescence on a cover to sell magazines. It's like, fuck that. You know, and they don't deal with all they all they deal with, which is you know understandable. I know, but, but all they deal is in the, the corporate. This is the band we want to promote and present because this is cool. This is metal. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I think of that, and you know, and and everything. But you know, but they were amazing. Um, you know, and again, I'll get to I'll get to that. But we're in line. You know, I'm like halfway to the line to get into the pit. Thankfully, I turn around. My dad starts screaming at me. You know, come back, come back, come back. Why? We gotta get the piss the uh, sorry uh, the pit wristband that we got. We gotta go get that. So you go from paperless ticket, you know, just scan a credit card, to now printed ticket, to use once to show to the person handing out the wristbands, which they didn't tell us. So you got to go, you know, to the entrance to the pit, then go back and get your wristband because they didn't because they didn't say nothing. I mean, because, I mean, you know that you have to, if you've done it before, you know you got to get a wristband, okay? But the thing is, usually the people that gave the tickets out, you know, that, that took your ticket, they were the ones that had the wristbands. So that's three people to get, to get just to get you into the fucking thing. And so you get your, we finally get a wristband, we go back to the line, we're, we're staying there and by now it's you know it's about two o'clock with all with all the bullshit and all the nonsense it's about two o'clock maybe quarter after two lines are getting bigger lines get bigger lines get bigger lines get bigger it's getting bigger 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 to where you know it's like whoosh, you know all you can see to the left of us there's this this big, just massive people. Some of them trying to get into the orchestra, which they weren't going to open for another two hours. Okay, which is ridiculous. Okay. Which is absolutely ridiculous. But they weren't going to open up to you know, four o'clock. So, okay, we knew that that meant you got two hours, again, in the sun, you know, and, and, and we knew we were going to have to wait, but the thing, the, the thing that's weird is they didn't open the lawn for like an hour, hour and a half, which is ridiculous. They kept people off the lawn. There's, there's no... There's, there's vendors up there, and there's no people. And it, it's it's like it's amazing, you know. They purposely shut the lawn to keep people buying 
the stuff from the vendors that are that are that were walking around. You know, which is stupid. I mean, I've 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 been to this place, seen a bunch of concerts for years, never seen that happen before. Where they, you know, because the the lawn is basically open as soon as you get in. You know, for the most part, because they've had a second stage that you had to cross the lawn to get to. But I mean, the the lawns, you know, the lawns open immediately. Once you get in, you can you can walk on there because you know you got the porta potties one thing, and then you've got vendors. You know, you've got the food vendors. You know, you got the drink people. You got the drink people walk, walking around with the trays. You know, a lot of the time you have other vendors out on a lawn or in the other area, and and, and it's like, but they're, but they're, they're having you sit there. You're sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and sitting there, and you know, and it, it, it's it, it's like it's ridiculous. You know, it, it, it like it, it. None of this stuff, none of what happened with with Live Nation made any sense. And and the kicker on this thing is, you know, it's it's like, you, you know, you know, my dad and I are talking, and of course with all the people there, you know, you couldn't really be quiet, and it's, it, it it's like you know, he's t you're trying to get me to go sit down, and, and all this, I was like, I ain't fucking moving. You know, with all the bullshit that's going on with with these morons, you know, where they can't get their shit straight, they're late, and I'll get more to that later, which really pissed me off. But again, nothing I can do about it. And this one wasn't Live Nation's fault. But the, the, you know, none of these people. I ain't moving, and there's people laughing because it's like, yeah, they understand. I ain't moving. So he goes to get water. Like within after five minutes of us standing in, in line to get into the pit, um, and remember that 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 three dollar water and hot dog deal that I told you about from from one to th from one to three. Well, um, I of course I I was in line the whole time. I did both. I didn't move. So he goes to get water. He tells me after the fact, after a minute, after you know he's been in the, in the car for an hour and a half, getting beat up. You know, I found him unfortunately after the fact. But again, you, that part's understandable. I mean, you're in the pit. You know, there's a bunch of people on there. Most of them are drunk. They're assholes. Or you got, you know, these little five foot girls with a twenty pound purse. Which doesn't which doesn't make any fucking sense. Which I've experienced twice. It's like, what the fuck are you doing in there? It's seriously, with a purse, you know, smacking somebody in the face with it, you know. But it's it's like he goes up to the window. He he gets two waters. He's charged four fifty a piece, which is regular price. He has to remind the person. Of the happy hour, they weren't going to give it to him. He says, "Wait a minute, for fifty, and it's like, no, no, no. Y y y you know, it's it's three dollars." He says, "Say, so, what are you talking about? For fifty, there's a ha there's a happy hour. It's three dollars from one to three, huh? What you talking about?" He has to remind the person who reluctantly gave him that price. Hey, they weren't going to do it. They weren't going to give him the price which they said they were going to. You know, there's the email. I have proof of the email. Because they sent it to me. You know, $3 waters, $3 hot dogs, $3 sodas from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. They're advertised early bird special which turned out to be 1.30 to 3 o'clock because we couldn't get in and so you know it, it's like Live Nation is a you know they really fucked up with this because they're incompetent 
they're way, I mean, they're incompetent people anyway that are, uh, are like, you know, they're one step from riding the short bus. They're, they're, they're just, they're fucking idiots that do this stuff. It's real simple. I mean, I realize there are a lot of people, but they're not completely agitated. They're not drunk yet. That's what the cops have to deal with. You know, and, and apparently for them it went really good because the group, and I won't mention them, but the, but the group, the, they're usually assholes. Things went a little bit better this year, apparently, because I stopped to ask them. Uh, but they still have to deal with the trains running. You know, which Ozzy got pissed off and says, you know, so when Ozzy performs at uh, in San Bernardino, at San Manuel, there are no trains running. But, but the thing is, the, the thing, I don't understand... The the thing with Live Nation, I mean, I just I don't I I don't understand what these guys are doing with the paperless tickets, with this almost near falsehood of an advertisement, which I have proof that that they offered this because they sent me the email. I have the email. It's like it's absolute ridiculousness, you know. And it, and it and it's like it's 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 ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The time wasted and the incompetence of of everything. And it, it's like you know. So it's it's like that was you know. I expected some of that because again these guys are idiots. You know and I mean you know this is one of the biggest outdoor amphitheaters you know you know that they've had but I mean it's not like you know it, you know it, it, I mean but I mean the, the venue has been open since 1983 it was built for the us festival uh, 83 I mean it's a huge area so, I mean, the, the place, you know, it's 30 years old, you know, it's changed ownerships over the years. Blockbuster owned it at one point, Hyundai had it at one point, now San Manuel's owned it for a while. But, I mean, it's a known venue, it's a huge venue, you know, you, you know what's going on, you know, and, and everything, but the thing is... You know, Live Nation, you fucked up. You really fucked up. And, you know, you, you, you were only saved because of the bands that were there. And I knew I was going to have a good time. And whatever shit I had to put up with would, would be worth it in the end. And, of course, it was. But, it, but it's like, Live Nation, you got to fix your shit. One of them... Get rid of this fucking retarded paperless billing because in the end, it turns out it's not paperless. It just saves you from printing out the tickets beforehand, but you're still printed out tickets. Just give me the fucking tickets from the beginning and there's not this delay of waiting for a credit card scanner to work. And everybody gets in a little bit quicker and everybody's less pissed off. Okay. So now we're getting to the concert. Um, you know, I'm waiting in line. I'm, I can barely hear Warbringer and Overkill. Um, I, which are, are bands that I really like. Um, I heard Warbringer when they came out. I've been a fan of theirs since the first album called War Without End. I have a copy. It's still sealed. The reason why is because, and I may have talked about it before, it's one of a thousand copies, red vinyl, with an exclusive song. With it, with an exclusive patch, so it's like it's there's not many of these out there, and I've only seen a couple, maybe three, ever for sale on 
eBay since this album came out. So not a lot of people have the vinyl. So that's why it's still sealed. Love them. Still haven't picked up um, Waking in the Nightmares, which is their second album. They may have a third one, but I don't remember the name of the title. But I will, I will be getting those eventually. I've, I've got a backlog of albums that I want to get. You know, and then I go, you know, and, and buy some other stuff. I've been buying a lot of video games in the last couple of months. Um, I probably purchased, you know, I I purchased probably four or five video games, and then I just bought a couple this weekend, which is abnormal for me because I usually, you know, buy maybe three for an entire year. Um, but the, the thing is. You know, so those are on my list. You know, they're amazing. Can't really hear them from where we are because they played on, on the current course, but I, I did hear some of it. They're amazing. Overkill, of course. You know, nothing should have to be said, but something does. Um, but I mean, you know, they've, they've, been, they've been doing this, you know, 25 plus years. I mean, the guys are amazing. You, you know, and they're they're just as important to thrash metal as their contemporaries that are more well known on the western side of the United States. You know, the guys. You know, they they've been doing it for so long. I mean, the guys are amazing. You know, Bill the Fire's amazing album. You know. Hammerhead, up from the gutter. You know, I mean, come on, these guys, these guys are great. You know, and they're definitely, you know, I think the big four. Not only is it a cor it's a corporate marketing ploy now, wasn't back then because it was, you know, it was, you know, it was known that way. You know. But the, but the thing is, you know, it, 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 it's like, it's really a false thing because it's only by how big your name is, you know, and record sales and everything like that. And you're going by that, you know, you should really just call it the big one and just leave Metallica um, for that. Because again, you know, by name, they're by far the biggest name, you know, by far the biggest in record sales. Uh, because I mean, you could probably add uh, sales for the other three bands. Total probably wouldn't even come close to what Megadeth or uh, Metallica has done. But anyway, that's you know that doesn't really matter. But I mean, the thing is, um, you know, Overkill, you know, amazing. Um, I could only listen to them because I was I wanted to be in the front for Iron Maiden because of the debacle thanks to Sharon Osbourne 2005. I've ranted about that before. Not going to revisit that rant. Because I mean I've been on this for over a half hour. I apologize. I will get to the good stuff. And and most of you, I'll put a warning about this so you know you can skip it if you want to so I'll let you know what this is. Um, so they, they, but I'll get to that. But okay, so you finally get in. You know, I'm in, and I'm basically right on the rail. There's the rail. There's one person in front of me. I'm there. Next. So I'm right behind the guy that's in front of the rail. So I'm basically as close as you can get. I stayed there for the entire from four o'clock to eleven o'clock. So I was there the whole time. Didn't get moved around. You know, it's like people push me, you push back. You know, while carrying, you know, an open water bottle throughout the entire thing, which I still have. Um, you know, kept it as a souvenir. But it, it's, it, but it's like you know, I'm basically you know, on the right side of the stage. You know, it's like so it's really cool. So you don't get a lot of, you know, you're not center, but I mean it's amazing. And with everybody how they're moving around, you know, you get to, you get to see 
you know, you get to see everybody real up close and everything, and it was amazing, you know, at, at, at certain points during, during when people are doing this. And so, uh, Sabaton comes on, you know, didn't know it, took me a couple of songs to get into the flow and the beat and the feel of what they were doing, which does anyway, because, you know, hearing new stuff, especially metal, I got to find, you know, I got to know the, the drum pattern, I got to know the guitar riff, you know, so I, I know, you know, where I can headbang, you know, where I can get into the groove of the song, get the feel for the song. They're amazing. Um, they are on iTunes. Um, Sabaton. That's uh, S A B A T O N, I think. Um, yeah. Um, so check them out um, on iTunes. I don't really like to suggest that. I'm going to see if I can find their CDs somewhere because I prefer to have CDs. Everybody knows, but of course. In this community, you want physical copies as much as you can. I doubt they have, I doubt they have vinyl, uh, but they're banned for Sweden. They are awesome. Uh, definitely a recommendation for Lazarus if he doesn't already know about them. They are amazing. So ch check them out. Uh, banned for Sweden, Land of the Vikings, as they put it. Awesome. And so they definitely got a new fan here. Uh, and these are these are these are cool guys. I mean, at one point, you know, and he's, he's joking. The lead singer, don't know his name, but he's a real jokester. He has a lot of fun on stage. He goes, you know, there's, you know, we can't stand the heat. You think we could stand the heat because we're from the land of the Vikings, you know? But we're female body parts when it comes to the, you can't say it, but we're female body parts when it comes to the. We can't handle this. We thought we could. We've been out here, ten, you know, 10 minutes. We can't. At one point, he brings up 12-year-old on the stage. Has a little bit back and forth with him. He hands him his glasses. He takes off his glasses, hands them to the kid, sends him back to his dad. You know, um, said... You know, he's got the coolest, you know, he's got the coolest dad in the world. Of course he does it, because I do. Because I do. Because, you know, two days after, you know, I still feel, you know, twice my age, which would basically be my dad's age. And, you know, this, you know, with, this, with the concerts we've gone to, the stuff, and I've, it's been a conversion to the heavier stuff, um, you know, after he converted me on the stuff that he listened to that I've been listening to my entire life. But the thing is, you know, it's like, they're amazing, they're fun guys, check them out. Uh, this was their, their first first time in the U.S., and they, just, they had a great tonight, they're a great band, check them out. You know, they're just, they're just, they're amazing. So, they finished their set, you know, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, you know, they bring out risers, and the guitar stands, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and they're putting up their backgrounds. But they weren't really back because they were in the front. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. Then you get the drum kit for Testament. And we're waiting. 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 Chuck Billy goes, Hey, Don, hurry this shit up. We gotta cut songs, dude. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. Then you get Testament. Um, I like Testament. That was the third time I'd seen him. I saw him open for Judas Priest at San Manuel on the Metal Masters Tour. I saw him with Slayer in Phoenix. That show was an amazing show. They were good here also, but again, 
with the aggravation of them coming on late, having to cut songs. I was mad. I mean, I was a lot less ticked off during their set after they played and during the playing of Into the Pit. You know, and everything, and, and it's like, but that was really stupid, but again, that was on their text for taking forever to do I don't know what. You know, and I want to keep this as, as clean as I can, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to make a vulgar suggestion of what they were doing. But these guys, these guys, they, they, they fucked up with, with that, because they're, I mean, you know, they're, even though I'd seen them, they were one of the bands I wanted, I wanted to see. I like seeing them, you know. I like everybody that was that was there. You know, Sabaton was the only one that I, I didn't know. I now know them, and, you know, and I'm going to get their stuff. But it, it's it's like, I wanted to see, even though a lot of people were a lot less enthusiastic uh, with, with them, and it's like, I don't care because... I'm the real deal. I like this stuff. I'm going to go have a good time. I'm going to scream. I'm going to headbang. Fuck all these other idiots that are there. Or, well, gee, I'm wearing an Iron Maiden t-shirt. I'm fucking cool. You know, I'm going to fit in. Fucking posers. You know, they just stand there and stand there and don't do nothing. And it's like, get the fuck out of here. You know, hundred dollars a ticket. You just stand there. Like, uh, 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 uh. I know I'm probably offending. You know, everybody here. You know, it. It. it yeah, I'm just. I'm, I'm sorry. This. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, but it, it's like, I, you know, and and it's it's just you know, you know, testament finishes. Fortunately, it was short. Because they're, you know, it's it's like, you know, I mean, you gotta, you can't just have the big four. You gotta expand it. You know, it's it's really gotta be the big six. But of course, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sound as good. Because you gotta have, I mean, how can you forget Exodus? How can you forget, you know, Testament? And there's a whole bunch of others. You know, you could you could even put Overkill in there because I mean they're they're so good. You know, and it's like nobody knows about them. You know, it's like they've been doing this you know twenty five years plus, and it's like you know, and and unfortunately they don't do they don't do a lot of tours except around you know shows in Jersey or whatever, which is unfortunate because they are amazing. You, you know, but it, it's like. You know, I was still excited for Testament, and I was happy to get to see them. They, they played pretty good. Chuck was having, you know, he was having issues again. He, you know, he looked he looked tired. Um, but still, I mean, it, it's like I'm never, i you know, I'm always always glad to see Testament. I mean, they're um, they're amazing. Uh, Anthrax came on next. Open with Cotton Amash. Didn't play Madhouse, unfortunately, because I really wanted to see it, but I saw them perform it uh, at the Big Four. So I've seen them perform that song. But it's like they were amazing. They were on fire. They're doing, I mean, they're amazing, crazy, jumping all over the place, having a good time, just ripping it up. You know, Joey's a fucking maniac, you know, playing to the crowd and do it, do it all, the, you know. Tossing, you know, Gatorade to the, the fans, you know, do, you know, and, you know, having, having just a good old time, you know. Charlie is just, the, you know, the beast, you know, you know, just beast, you know. And Scotty, Scotty, you know, that's all you need to say. It's cool. The interesting thing, this took me by surprise, shocked the shit out of me. They, you know, they ran through, you know, Indians, I Am The Law, you know, like I said, Cotton Amash, you know, Antisocial, you know, 
great song. They pull out backgrounds of dime on one side, deal on the other side of the stage to a tribute to deal, which was um, it sh shocked the shit out of me. It's like I'm right in front seat. It's, it's like what the fuck's going on, Ozzy? What the hell? Okay, now that, that's an interesting defensive call following the duck with Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> and they even said it on TV. Holy shit. What the fuck is this world coming to? Why do you have... Oh, fuck you, Dan Deardorf. You fucking idiot. <laughs> If you can't understand Ozzy Osbourne, you're... Well, I don't need to finish that shit. Fuck, Fuck you. I heard. Okay. Anthrax closes with a cover version of, get this, TNT. Don't need to tell you the, the name of the. <laughs> it was nuts. It was nuts. I couldn't believe it. You know, and I'm screaming the lyrics like a fucking idiot. You know, with like two people around me singing along. Everybody's standing there. Duh. What the fuck are we doing here? I'm spending my drug money in the tank because there's nothing else to do. Oops. Um. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. You know, I was like, huh? you know, totally taken by surprise. You know, and it was amazing. You know. So, then you get Megadeth, after a while, um, open with Hangar 18, they close with, um, all the words, of course, um, I wrote down most of the second I remember, because I knew just about everything. Kingmaker from Super Collider, which is the only song I didn't know because I didn't want to get, don't want to get that album. Didn't get 13. Because the stuff I heard from, and the stuff I heard from Worship Music Against Stupid. Um, almost got it because when Mr. Hall of Fame showed, showed his copy, the orange vinyl looks really cool. I almost bought it just because of that, but decided against it. The music sucked. I mean, uh, the song Crawl. Sounds like Limp Biscuit from, you know, the late 90s, and it's like, that stuff shit. I don't like that sound. It doesn't belong anywhere. It's not metal. It's not music. Get the fuck out. So, wasn't going to buy that uh, album, especially after I heard that song. Um, Kingmaker was the only song I didn't know that they played, because it was new. I don't have the album. I may have to get it now, because... Curiously enough, my dad likes it, so I may have to, I've been to the front. I do know that you can get it on wax, so I'm, 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 I'm going to get it. Um, but there's like three albums that I need to get now. That one, Dark Roots of the Earth, and the one from Testament. I still want to get Blood by In This Moment. Um, you can get it on, on, on vinyl. I'm going to do it that way. I uh, saw it at Best Buy for like eight bucks, but... Didn't want to get it on CD, uh, but anyway, you know, basically this is most of Megadeth's set. Um, Hangar 18 was the opener. Second song, Wake Up Dead. Third song, Sweating Bullets. I believe the fourth one. Not all of these are going to be in the order that they played. Uh, Sweating Bullets. Then Darkest Hour. Then Symphony. Kingmaker was in that list. Also played Tornado Souls. You know, Peace Cells. And, uh, you know, close with 
you know, Holy Wars. Uh, there was probably one or two other songs that I don't remember, you know, two days after the concert. They played for about an hour. They were amazing. For me, they were the band. Everybody was on, you know, the whole day. It was amazing. But for me, they were the band of the day, including with Iron Maiden. And Iron Maiden does what Iron Maiden does, you know, and just they blew you know, they attempted with the pyrotechnics and the to put a new roof. You know, they need to put a new roof. They wanted to put holes in the roof, and that's exactly what they did. They were on fire the entire fucking night for two hours. Fucking amazing. But for me. Megadeth was the band of the night. It was Dave's birthday. He was on fire. Almost literally. They were amazing the entire time. And again, third time I've seen them. Still prefer the Phoenix show in 2010. I mean, they were, you know, they were on it and they just, they were, they were killing it down in Phoenix, which is the second home for them. You know, even though they're doing that, you know, 20th anniversary, Rust in Peace, which I don't really like when bands do that because it's like, you know, not that I'm, you know, I mean, if it's a known band, you know, it's a band, I mean, know the material. I don't care, you know, even if Iron Maiden had done, you know, you know, do a show and they basically did from, um, you know, they did their, you know, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, you know, mock up style tour like you know you know which they were doing in the late 80s you know around the time that I was born but it's like you know you do that and it's fine because it's like you know even if they'd done you know the first album or you know you know or um uh you know number of the beast which was born you know six to eight years before I was born you know, I know the music anyway because I'm a fan of this band. So it's like it doesn't it doesn't matter when they, when they do that. But it's like I, you know, I prefer especially with Iron Maiden since they got so many good songs. So I prefer that you know, you know, when a band's got you know so many good songs and you know your ten, eleven albums into your catalog. You know, there's a there's so many good songs. So I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of. Um, you know, you know, I'm not really a big fan of that stuff. You know, when they go and they when they do it, um, you know, this album retro thing. I think it's kind of lame and pathetic, and it's been done. Uh, you know, to death. You know, for decades. Um, but I I still do prefer that show in 2010. But uh, Made It for me was the band of the of the day, but. It was all, for Iron Maiden, it was all worth it. Um, they did, you know, a mock-up retro of the Seventh Son of a Seventh Son tour presentation. It was amazing, you know. It, it was it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. That's, that's, the, that's, the only, that's the only thing I can say. If you needed one word... That's what it would be, and that's all I, all I can say about it. I was, I, I mean, it made up, you know, tenfold for missing them in 2006 at the Verizon Amphitheater, which is where I saw Black Sabbath, which, which would have been amazing to see them there. Uh, a lot smaller, it's like, you know, like a quarter of the size of, of, uh, Sam and well, but um, you know, it, it's like it made up for it, you know, tenfold. You know, missing him in 2006 because I couldn't because I had school that day because I was still in high school, and it made up for the Sharon debacle, the disgusting, you know, and it, it's like. You know, it, 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 it made up, you know, it, it made up for even that. Um, so all in all, it was all, it was all worth it, all the shit that I had to put up with. It was, it was all worth it. Um, the thing, the thing of it is though, 
you know, I, I've got, you, you know, I, I just, I'm really confused with this, with this paperless building thing. It doesn't, it didn't make any sense from the beginning, and it didn't make any sense after because they still printed out tickets. You, they were, you were still handed a tangible paper ticket. So why not give it to me from the beginning? Save me headache and save Live Nation headache and save the people that are taking the tickets headaches. You know, because even if this was a politically motivated move, it didn't do anything because they still printed up paper tickets. I don't get that at all. I don't get it at all. I really don't. And I'm seeing, coincidentally, I'm seeing Slayer uh, next month. I don't have paper, you know, paperless tickets. I got paper ones. Really, they're going to be sent to my house. I made sure to do that. I'm never doing paperless tickets again if I can avoid it that is a stupid idea you know if you want to do something to, if you want to do paperless this is the way you need to do it have them sent to the smartphone and they scan the smartphone you know instead of scanning a paper ticket or or running a credit card scan the smartphone I was at Michael's getting frames for um, for the, the Slayer autograph poster that I showed and for that uh, that Slayer Eagle that I, I showed. I, I, I got frames for those. Uh, there was a coupon um, that they sent to my dad, you know, $15 off, 15% off, whatever. It you know, I didn't print it out. I pulled it up on my smartphone. And the guy at Michael's scans it right on my phone, which I knew he was going to do, and that's awesome. If you want to go paperless, do that. I mean, come on. You know, I, 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 I don't, I don't get it. Because paperless ticketing turned out to not be paperless ticketing. So you wasted my time. You wasted your time. And you still cut down a bunch of trees to print those tickets out. Huh? Same with the aggravation, same with the bullshit, and save it for you guys too. Come on, guys. So, I, I, I apologize, guys. I realize I've been going on for an hour almost. I apologize. I realize probably none of you are going to watch this thing the whole way through. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry for going off. I didn't want to do, go for this long. I wanted at most half this. I apologize. I really do. And, and I don't fault you if you just say, fuck this. I'm not going to deal with it. The, th the thing is, I'll, I'll have to put this, um, I'll put this in the description because nobody will probably see this to the end. But, the, but the thing is, um, if you guys have any help, for this paperless building, if you've done anything like that, read anything, or have anything to help me with, can you help me understand what's what's the point of this? Because I really don't understand it, other than just trying to save some trees, which in the end they didn't do. So I'm even more confused. So if anybody that knows about this way of delivering tickets, or has gone through paperless ticketing, you know, for a concert. You know, again, at the end, I mean, I know I got to see everything. Everything was okay in the end, but I'm still really confused. So if anybody can help me, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And this is the end of this. The next three videos will be all vinyl. I promise you. Thank you, guys. And for anybody that st stuck to the, to the end with this, Thank you so much.